been working on Black Death seven months prior to early access release, so it's yep. been a year and seven months. So prior to launch, we, we were concentrating on getting mechanics in, uh, and then we worked on trying to get those into the world, into the big world, and getting the art done for the world. Uh, and then once we released into early access, we started working on trying to nail those down and seeing fixing stuff based on feedback. Then before we came out in our access, you can go around, you hit a guy in the head, kill him, access his loot bag. Yeah. All the fundamentals of a survival game in terms of killing each other and taking things from other people. The week prior yeah. was... No sleep. Yeah. And that, that continued to the week after yeah. release of access. <laughs> it was weird. I mean, we had that funny moment where it was like when the game came out and we were just like, let's just do it. I remember it was like four in the morning, we were playing it. Mm. They wanted out three hours later, and we're just like, okay, it's not crashing, let's go. And we got the champagne out nine o'clock in the morning, and as we popped the cork, game's crashing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Champagne goes back in the fridge. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think we were uh, like, oh, we can have a rest, get yeah. some food. No, no, <laughs> back to it. I, mean, I like that we prioritize the champagne opening over going to bed. Yeah. We were trying to come up with a game idea. We, we played a lot of survival games ourselves, H1Z1 all the others like oh, Ark and stuff like that and we, we, we really like survival and we were like oh it seems weird that nobody's ever done the Black Death because it seems you know millions of people died it seems like you know one of the biggest the most cruelest, survival, yeah. realistic survival simulator yeah. of experience of all time is trying to survive the Black Death the first three professions we had in the game when we launched in early access was the peasant the merchant and the militia for sure, kind of play in the three dynamics of, uh, I like to think, is makes a good survival game. But we wanted that nice little triangle of, they kind of have to help each other. Because yeah, we, we kind of felt like there was, even though we've changed our minds now, but back then, also our game was just purely PvP focused. And we wanted to give players an option to like maybe stop smashing each other's heads. Yeah. But after we had those first two professions, we decided to even specialise even further in their, their retrospective skills, like, you know, gathering. We had the hunter, comes from peasant, Yep. Um, obviously, he's a gathering specialist from animals. Um, the monk, who monk. was the crafting specialist, who would specialise in sort of yeah remedies and cures and sort of healing stuff he's, like that. We've the, got the blacksmith, the oh, which blacksmith. is another crafting specialist, but he's more combat focused. When creating the bear class, like it seemed like a very troll kind of class. It was quite yeah. a take the mickey at yourself kind of thing. Yeah, Start off like, oh, it's just what funny stuff can we put in? You know, oh, he's begging, his skill's begging. I mean, what type yeah. of skill is that? Isn't it? <laughs> Requires nothing. <laughs> um, and then I think it was just the most interesting point it came to when developing them is when people started using them. Yeah. And um, people started using them as like a dirty fighter. So we started putting skills in for like, he benefits from using really dodgy weapons. And then we realized he's actually a really good starter class. So that's why yeah, yeah. we started changing them up quite a bit. That's what, yeah, we put the profession system in sort of order of, of a more rigid order. Yeah, yeah, more of like, you know, a success story. I think he's really good for sort of summing up the RP inside of what we were doing, because when, when we released he that that patch with the beggar, some hilarious stuff. There was some dude, I can't remember which YouTube or Twitter it was, but he was going around and he was using VoIP. He was using voice to like Shadow pretend. Cracks, yeah, 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 yeah. He's a good guy. And he was, he, so he's begging, he's coming up to you and he's like, oh, please yeah, give yeah. me some money, sir. And it was just like, I was like, oh, that is what we wanted. That, you know, that's, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, so Night and the Outlaw were kind of like uh, bandit. Bandit and cops, cops and robbers kind of yeah, theme. Yeah. We, wanted, we wanted the two classes to kind of play against each other to create a bit of tension for those kind of people who get a bit later into the game. We gave uh, mechanics to them, so their special moves are kind of help that cops and robbers kind of thing. So yeah, outlaw steals, uh, the knight gets a reward for killing bandits, you takes the head and sells it on. You can actually you literally scan yeah. the player in a medieval way and find out how much yeah. bounty they're worth and yeah. decide whether to cut their head off and sell it. Yeah, so we wanted to add um, that kind of like tension, so like you see a dude in the distance, you're like, oh, hey, buddy, yeah. you look a little, you look yeah. a little dodgy. Yeah. <laughs> and the outlaws are good at hiding their profession, so yeah. to speak. So they're the ones that are looking out for the knights and like pretending to be innocent peasants while stealing the swords yeah. in, their, in their purse, yeah. so to speak. We have a very excitable, talented art team, I believe, that enjoy expanding the game's world, and it's quite easy to do. Because um, yeah. of the setting, like referencing, you just pull up badass castle. Look at oh, look, look at that one in Scotland, <laughs> or look outside. We're yeah. in the UK. We can just look around the corner. Yeah, it's great for like p making the NPCs feel right as well. Yeah. Yeah, when you make a marketplace, it's for the NPCs. So yeah. designing it that way as well um, makes a lot of sense in terms of new places to create in the game, like cave systems. You know, who lives in there? 
Is mm. it dangerous? Is it you know, there's wolves in there? Um, so that's, that's usually we we, we touch on gameplay and visuals in terms of new locations. We've had a couple of different community kind of events that, that have evolved over the time. One of, one of my personal favourites is the Fight Fridays. We get a bunch of people together, uh, Twitch streamers, YouTubers, they, they film it, whatever they want to do, we'll just jump in. And we have an arena in the main city, so everyone sits on the benches and we sort of, uh, Mini Shadow is the guy in the, who normally leads it, gets up the front and is like, okay, so let's see, you guys fighting and they fight to death. The other one that we do, which is good fun, is Tavern Tuesdays. Like the initial idea was we, we meet a bunch of people in the pub and we just chat with them, they ask questions and stuff. So yeah, kind Virtual of pub. Virtual pub, um, in, in the game. Which, the game. And that's good fun, that's nice to hear because we get a lot of feedback off people saying, you know, this is, this is broken or I'd love to see this or, you know, I really like this, could you carry on doing that sort of thing. And there's a good really nice. ability as well to have a lot of people in one place. Yeah, yeah definitely. Anyway, we're tricking the people into <laughs> testing the yeah. service for us. Yeah. <laughs> What we've learned in the past year is not being scared to shake up the core foundations of the game if people just aren't playing long enough and enjoying it. We're almost stuck in that loop where we're just changing the hunger value of a bread roll over and over again. It almost felt like that. Yeah. And the so game wasn't really getting any better. Sometimes it can be yeah, core stuff that needs changing rather yeah. than smaller elements. And one of the easiest ways is to actually watch people playing again. You can listen to the comments and stuff and they have good stuff in, but sometimes just watching somebody just play watching. is far better. Yeah, but it's just something we found out. We needed early access yeah. to find that out. Yeah, like little things like we had iron swords in the game that you'd find a little bit like Skyrim, you'd find a little, oh, there's an iron sword. Yeah. It actually completely got ruined the whole fact of collecting iron, turning it into ingot, yeah. turning it, crafting it into a sword. Cut, it got rid cut, of all like, that content. A big chunk of the game. Yeah, yeah like. which is actually really fun and rewarding. We almost ruined all that. It was a bit too easy in a way i think that's another thing we learned like there was we went too sandboxy there was no real puzzle to the game you know yeah. craft yeah like cameras and like craft and you just find the stuff so there's no real need to craft where we were just making these cool systems and just giving them to the player with no yeah. work no yeah no yeah. puzzle route to get to the stuff yeah. Yeah. so that's, that was a good lesson to learn